a vidazine. You'll be here long enough, and now it's your time to go. <laughs> Hello guys, and welcome back to the kingdom. So, last time, we finished off the actual storage system that I have down there, which is good. Haven't put anything fancy on the front or the back of that yet either. But what I have been doing between episodes is trying to get more of the spawn chunks filled up and lit up. So the majority of it has been done now, as you can see where the glowstone is. And no, it is getting there. So I've got a bit more to do. And I've actually got to fill in a whole load of water still as well. So that I can actually make my squid farm here. Now to do that I need to get a lot more smooth stone as that's what I want to use for this. Also, I need a block to make my wither farm out of, um, with a skilly farm, which I do plan to do before episode 20 still. So we'll be doing that. But for that, I do need to get more stone bricks, which I want to use for the wither farm. Which means I also need to get more smooth stone for this in spawn. So the natural progression is to get my furnace system ready. So let's go down here. So there is an area that I actually want to use my furnace system for, as my storage system is here, and this works very well and everything else. Everything I want is stored in here. So what I want to do is hook things up such that I can put things into a minecart system. Those items then get unloaded into the system here. Some will be sorted straight away into these chests. Other things I want to be smelted and then sorted into this actual whole area here. So today we're making my industrial furnace system. Now I have a design that I've been playing with that I want to make in here. But I need to make it a lot different for what I want to have in this world essentially because I need to make it such that items will come in. At the moment the items come in at this level down here. So anything I send through through minecart chests will come through to here and get offloaded. Now I need then a delivery system to move those things to a furnace station to then get unloaded and then from that the furnaces will then cook everything that I need and have it all divided properly and then from that those items will then come through another minecart system to then send them into the top of this so we actually get rid of the lag associated with the item lift up the side get them sent into the top through the item streams that we have set up already Let's hop up there very quickly, and then we'll just go up here. Actually, that'll be quicker. Um, so the item streams I have at the moment, I've got all these item streams going across. That's good. And the separate way up here, if I can just get up there, this is where I want to send all those items from the furnace system. So they come into the top here, into here, and then be going straight into the sorting system without needing to go through any of the item lifts on the side as such. Also, another thing I want for this is to be able to cook things on demand. So it's going to be set up to do lots of bulk items whenever I want or automatic items when they come through the system. So for instance if I want to start cooking tons of um, cobble, if I have it already coming through the system like so into here, I want a system such that there's some sort of interface somewhere so I'm thinking around here somewhere, such that I can just maybe hold a button or something and send tons of bulk items through to go into the system. Um, so maybe tons of fuel I chuck in there or tons of blaze rods, tons of cobble or something or tons of ore that I want to have smelted in there or tons of cactus or something. Anything that I don't genuinely smelt in sort of normal instances. And then they will be sent into the system through some sort of item lift. That's kind of the aim today. It's going to be quite a fun project. It's a lot different to the ones I showed in the King Designs. Similar in the actual base of it, but going to and from, much different. So if you haven't seen that King Designs yet, there will be a link in the description for that anyway. The first thing I'm going to do is actually clear out some area here somewhere and work out where I actually want this minecart station. And kind of work out the logistics of what's going to go in, where it's going to come out, and everything else. So I'm going to do some mining here and clear out some area. And then we'll kind of work out where I want it to go. So, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I've done a huge amount of work here. And 
as you can see this is all different now I'm kind of mapping out how I want this interior to look because the whole point of this spawn chunks is that everything is kind of crammed in as many farms as I can be it's going to be crammed in behind the scenes little hidden places everywhere all feeding into this massive storage system and that's the whole point of the spawn chunks I've got my tower in the middle in which I've put some wiring in that go up and there will be some wiring coming down at some point for something else that's why it's a bit bigger than it needs to be this bit over here is all gone um, <laughs> I went through a few pickaxes um, getting that to be done so let's see there is all of these were worn out just from doing that um, so I need to go repair them so why did I clear out this big area? well the furnace system isn't going to be very big in its own right but I need to be putting lots of minecart systems around now me I hate minecarts they're unreliable in general, they're buggy, they glitch out they stop working for odd reasons but for these sort of automation and stuff I want to be trying to use minecarts as much as I can to reduce the hopper usage and also to reduce sort of item lifts and such like that so there's a couple of things I want to do these systems here at the front are going to be the inputs for my furnace system now they are quite a lot of inputs um, so maybe the top will be actual things to cook and the bottom one will be actual fuel so both sides around I want light indicators for different things along the stages of the process also from this, as I'm putting them in this level I don't really want to cook them at this level as well, maybe not so I need some sort of way of getting these to be sorted in the middle and then a minecart system to pick them up from a collection point here sending them to the furnace array wherever it is and then when the furnaces are finished and send a minecart from the furnaces to the storage system that's kind of how it's going to work um, I could put things in here automatically when they come through a port or something but I think I want to do it manually in bulk just to save on fuel because if I put one thing in now and then just for the sorting it's going to use a whole item to cook it in every single time and it's going to be a bit annoying and wasteful so unless I'm doing some sort of automatic farm going in like a cow farm or something then that might come in, that might come in automatically and be cooked but other than that I don't really want to send many things in here automatically so I've got a bit of furnace system in here somewhere and set up the minecarts and then I'll be back for another update okay so the furnaces are in and the reason I've got so many input chests here is such that I'm going to be cooking double chests worth of stuff at a time, so many double chests worth at any one point. I'm not going to be doing this for a tiny bit now and then, this is serious smelting. So what I've got here is a detector for both chests, one for the actual thing we're smelting, one for the fuel, and there's an indicator on that saying if there is stuff in here, then it'll turn the lights on the front. It's a simple little redstone circuit for that. So if these top lights go out, everything's been smelted. If the bottom light goes out, then we need more fuel. That's about the gist of it. And the rest of the chests are from massive backup, so I can put tons of maybe blaze rods from blaze farm or coal from wither farm all the way back through, and they'll be okay. Got 16 furnaces in here, so it's enough to keep smelting things at quite a high rate. Um, yeah. So let's put some minecarts into here. We'll go and just see this actually working first. So let's push this across and make sure it goes back. Let's go to that. So all we're gonna do is get it going. So I put them there. Be easier. And that's start filling up. Now I want not all of it to be filled up. So I'll do it at the end. I play with this before in creative. If I have enough at the end to make sure that they're kind of floating blocks so that they don't actually go into the furnace as you see it goes across it's going to put in 32 items it's going to go this way for 16 then back for 16 more so you only really want to be holding 32 things in there that you actually want to cook at any one time so the moment there's maybe 35 or something in that so when they come back the space at the end of just the actual stone bricks there's kind of a extra bit at the end just to make sure that only 32 could go back and forth you can do a less amount into here, maybe one in here, to make sure that they have 23 items in them. But 23 items in this isn't enough to do 16 furnaces back and forth. 
So we're doing the same for the top as well, which is the actual stuff going in. So let's put it down here. And again, I'm just going to put 13 into the end here. So they should never actually enter the furnace themselves. That should be fine with that. So they go in and they'll be released. So that's all good. And they start cooking. Now, there we are. They go on as we go. And they start smelting things pretty darn quickly. So, the other thing with this, no, this works fine for things going in. No, the cobble and everything else will keep coming in, keep coming in until it's all gone. That's good. But, what we don't want to happen is to actually the fuel to keep pumping in and in and in. You can see we're at 9 at the moment, and we'll keep going up and up and up. If I change fuel, so if I'm putting blaze rods in this, then blaze rods won't come into here, they'll come into the back actually instead. So, oh, there's a bit spare from when I was moving things around. <laughs> don't mind that. They can't go in the back anyway as the fuel is filtered. That's um, actually a nice little show of how that actually works. Um, so it starts coming here quite quickly. So, I'm okay with the f actual cooking stuff to come in all the time, but the fuel, I actually want a cutoff point. So if I'm using a blaze farm or a wither farm, no, and maybe there's tons of this in here, tons of it backing all the way through, I don't want this to go all the way, all the time, going back and forth, trying to put fuel in, even then it can't fit it in. So we need a turn off feature to make sure that if there is stuff in here, so over a certain amount of items in one of these hoppers at least, then you'll make sure that this whole bit here gets turned off. Only when that fuel gets used up, then it will start actually cooling the minecart again. So I've got to do that. And next part also I've got to do is to make sure that I get these items going in the system. So at the moment, you know, we've got two and a bit sacks going through already. And they keep coming through at quite a rate. Now they're going through. So that's good. But now we've got to get that from here into the storage system. And another thing I'm going to do is get rid of these um, actual dropper towers. So the drop of elevators, because they are the biggest cause of the lag around here, the vertical redstone. So I want to change them up for a minecart system as well. Same with this collection point here. This floor has actually got hoppers underneath. So if I chuck things into here, then it will go into here and then up. Now, I actually want to change this such that I would have a minecart system, same as I have for the furnaces themselves, such that they'll pick items out of a chest on here and manually move them up to the top with the minecart system and then drop them off there. I'm going to get rid of this whole drop elevator here completely and do the same for the bit where it loops around then go to the other side of the storage array. Okay, so that's the next thing to do. Some more progress to be made and I'll be back once I've got those things done to give you a little show of how it works. Okay, more progress is done then. So let's go have a look. So this I've sent through all of the cobble I had in the world, which was maybe six, seven double chests worth of stuff. So that's all gone through and been sent through into my storage. So that's been good. I've been using a whole load of that as well on the surface, made a lot more progress on that. Let's go over and look what I've done with it. Because it's taken quite a little while to get it worked out and working properly and efficiently how I wanted to. So you saw this bit before. And what I've got done added in just something over here, just kind of a, a little maximum overflow, such that if there's enough stuff in here to give out a fire signal, which I believe is going to be quite a large amount of stacks actually. Okay, that many, many. So over three stacks ish on that will give a th four signal, five signal, that one, and then turn this torch off. If that is true for that end and this end over here. Then it will turn this little AND gate on, and, well, whichever one. And it will send the signal around here and just basically force this piston like this, such that this minecart will not move out of here, even if it's full of stuff like so. So that's good, and that would basically mean that once the stuff keeps cooking and this fuel gets used up, then this will get less in here, and then it will allow the cart to keep moving again, which is what we wanted. Um, so we really changed for that bit there, I guess. Over here, so the major source of lag on the world is actually things like this. So items moving along a long stream seems to be the biggest cause of lag. So I want to replace this bit here with the minecart. I'll show you what I've done with the other ones, but this basically just shoves it out and goes along here, and it comes down to this bit down here. Now this thing all changed. This is all gone now. Elevators are gone, everything else has disappeared. 
So we're playing with this, minecarts. Now, I still really hate minecarts, but this may be a sort of a logical way forward for some things. It's basically a loader for things coming out that way, and things coming from the actual sort of thing I'm throwing on the middle bit there. It comes down to here. It all comes into here and one little thing, and then we'll go to a minecart. Now, minecarts are still unreliable. I am not a fan of them still, but we're trying. I'm trying. Um, it's up here. This minecart's got stuck. Um, doesn't normally happen, but they do get stuck now and then just because of how the world is loading. So that goes back down. So that's going to pick up so many stacks of items, bring them up here, and I've got a modified unloader here, which I've been playing with. It's basically going to allow the thing to shut in time. So wait for some stuff to come up, actually. Um, I was playing with this before, and if I just do it with how I was doing this before, this was going straight to a block and making this close so that it would only actually let it go when it was empty. But there wasn't enough um, sort of haste on moving this out and it would go up and then go back and then maybe come back again and it catch it in time, which wasn't particularly good. Now from this, which is going to go back in a second, yeah. over here I've been playing with minecarts, so I've got a hop on my cart in here which is going to unload it from this minecart here and then from that we have a hop underneath the minecart which will go into this and then go into the system I've moved the input from this mass water stream into this bit here which just goes into the same bit here and goes into the same little item stream there um, that's about it for that so it still catches it, that's okay and on the other side I've got it such that when the items come back down they then get sent all the way through the system down this side and they end up coming out here. They'll then come into this chest and then into this hop minecart. When this one has enough, then it will go all the way up this side and all the way up, all the way up, all the way up and over. And then come to another little catcher here. Same design as the one I did over there. And that'll just make sure that it unloads it all properly. Same sort of thing again, minecart under here. You can just sit with the hopper underneath coming into the system. So that all works relatively well. There is a couple of niggles with it now and then for, you know, if you have five different items go through with like one of each item in it, um, so five different stacks, maybe one item of each thing, then it doesn't kind of build up enough items in the hopper itself to actually make it move. So sometimes it's a bit annoying. Um, but I'm playing with it still. Back down, oh, I moved that one, whoops. <laughs> it seems to do it okay. It all works well. Like I said, I might change this to a hop minecart. Just bring it from there over to here and just deposit it straight into a chest like so. Could be a way forward. Um, but yeah, I do need to start looking on massive lag control in the world because there are some things that I can change quite easily. Such as there are some of these chests which I don't actually want that many stored for it. So I can actually reduce some of the hoppers in the actual thing. I said that at the beginning it was a massive problem. I can just go and reduce the actual storage I have in there, that's fine. And another thing I want to do is actually change the witch hut completely. Um, the actual killing part down here at least. That will save a huge amount of hoppers because the lag comes from arrays of hoppers like this. And streams of hoppers on the same level it seems. So getting rid of them would be a bonus. Um, but yeah, I, I like this, this is good. So we're going to look at what I've got over here for my little board of things to do in the world. So, Record Farm, Map Beacon, Slime Farm. The Slime Farm has been quite productive actually. I went up there earlier today when I was doing all this stuff and there was four stacks of slime balls in there. We will revisit that at some point to see if we'll make a sort of more impressive bigger one. But for now, that's still running. Ice farm isn't done yet. Industrial smelter, I think, is done. That's the one over there. Um, yeah, I've smelted quite a lot of things through that already. Potion area, storage area. Storage area is partly done. There's still a lot more things to add into that. <laughs> I've got a lot of plans for that. So I kind of want to just kind of distribute what areas of this bottom bit that I actually want to use for different things. So this is obviously storage, and that is industrial furnace. I need a mass crafting area, such that I can just do tons of crafting with it, so things like the iron from over there from the iron farm, and the gold nuggets over there from the gold farm. I'm not sure where I want to have that though. Um, I was thinking originally, 
having a mass storage area for things like that, mass crafting at the end there. I'm not sure how close I am to the edge of spawn chunks though, I think I had another couple of chunks to add on the end. Um, I might want to have mass crafting over here somewhere though, as most of the gold comes from the portal. Um, it might be a good place to do it, because most of my crafting is the gold, I'm going to do tons and tons of gold blocks or something. It could be a good place to put it. Um, so we'll earmark that over there for mass crafting. And that's not actually one of my signboards anyway though. But I want to mainly look at, there's two sort of main areas I'm going to have for the rest of the world in spawn chunks. Which is kind of animal farms and then sort of produce farms. So sugarcane, pumpkins, wart farms and flower farms and things like that, cocoa farms all that. These go in one area. Now, one of these sort of things over here I'm thinking, one branch has to be animals and one branch has to be the actual produce. So I'd have all sorts of cave caverns, little caves and little things all alongside these pieces along the edge with all different little farms in them which all come down to a collection system so sort of a, a general collection system with hopper minecarts and such I think which would then send things I'm thinking underground send them underground and then send them to the mass storage area down there which then be put into this um, just by minecarts I think it might be a good way to do it um, for practical reasons, to keep them all close together and sort of collect them all at once instead of having 10 different places everywhere, sending them all in separately, just have a communal um, sort of produce shaft to just sort of a minecart send it along from everything. <laughs> I hope that makes some sort of sense. A communal produce drain. That makes more sense, doesn't it? So an earmark. I want to. S I'm not sure really. It doesn't really make much difference. Um, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I'm going to do animals down here. So and farms, and then down this one over here, we will do the produce. Um, so down here we produce. Other things I've got here, so that takes care of most of those things for a location. Fish farm will be in the animal. Snow farm will be in snow biome, along with the ice farm, that's fine. Slime farm will be on the surface still. Um, record farm will be somewhere else. Trading farm will be something else. What else have I got left? We've got the wither farm, that will be soon. I've got to find a fortress which I'm happy with. Silverfish will be at the end of course. Blaze farm. I've got a location for a double blaze farm. What else have I got? Squid farm, that's going to be on the surface. Sheep farm will be on the animal one, over there. I have got one that I wanted to do though. I wanted my potion area. There, that's what I want. Potion area. Now this potion area I think needs to be over here. Because things like the gas tears and such that come through will go straight into it, all of the um, magma cream will come through and come into it and I've already made a nice big hole here, I didn't use TNT at all because I needed the cobble itself that's why I didn't kind of do it like that so I'm thinking as I clear that area I might have my potion area here because what I wanted is to have maybe a double chest of every single potion easily accessible along the front and then if I take some of out of that and it's not full anymore then the whole system will then cook up more of that potion and put them into the chest. So I'm going to say potion area will be here somewhere. I don't know if it will be right next to that, but there is some space here. I'll probably take out a huge amount of that or something. I'm going to say potion room goes here. Potion area. That's kind of earmarked most of the places that needs to go around the world. This thing will all be gone fairly soon. I probably won't do that on actual video. I'll just show you the results sometime. That's sort of a live stream content thing to do. So yeah, that is looking pretty good. We're progressing very well in this world. I do have to have an alternative way in, which would be somewhere like here, to fall down from the surface. But yeah, that is kind of moving into the finishing stages of the world already. And then we've got a storage system. we just got to start making our farms and things. The farms will be really nice to film for me. Just do a little design of each one and can do an episode of one or two of them at a go should be really good but other than that I think that is all we have time for today I've got to plan my wither farm still um, I haven't done that quite yet I've got a load of ideas which I want to do for it 
But yeah, that is all I have time for today. I think we've got a lot done. We got a lot of the lag sorted out from the item elevators because they're still going now, but they're not actually lagging too much. Um, the world isn't very healthy on lag as it is though. So we'll look to improve that in the future. So thank you very much guys for joining me. Hope you enjoyed. Please like if you have enjoyed it. This takes a long time to make. And I'll see you next time.